Have you ever wondered how to cultivate a home where everybody has the freedom to dream? That's the home that I want. <laughs> Do you struggle to motivate your children to learn? Definitely there were times when I had that problem. Are you not sure what direction you're headed as you're setting goals for next year's uh, school year at home? You're not sure what goals to set. Like, where are you going? What uh, path are you headed down? You're going to enjoy today's conversation. I'm talking about creating a home where everybody wants to learn, grow, and dream. Being a parent who educates children at home, it could sometimes feel very burdensome. The weight of responsibility can get very heavy at times. So creating or hearing someone talk about creating a home where everybody wants to learn, grow, and dream can seem like a pipe dream. Yeah, we hope for that, but is it really attainable? That's what I'm going to be talking about, and uh, I want to welcome you. My name is Diana Rolston, and this is Spark Homeschool Parent. This is a community where everyone is welcome, and I really strive to make it an encouraging community without judgment, where we can talk about our fears, our questions, and uh, just those concerns and problems that we have day to day while we're educating our children at home. So I want to welcome you. This conversation is for you if you're looking how to create a home education environment of your dreams. You're going to enjoy today's conversation if you're starting to think about goal setting for the year ahead and you are in the right place. If you're wondering how defining your purpose can create less stress and more freedom. Doesn't that just sound beautiful? This is Spark Homeschool Parent. I want to thank you for joining. I see we have a few people. Uh, oh, I just got to put the comments on. See, I have a few people there. I have someone who says they're a Facebook user saying hi. If you could just put your name in there, that would be awesome. And others, as you're joining, um, I want to welcome you. And also for those that are watching the replay. Yes, less stress, more freedom. <laughs> um, I was looking back, and this is my 26th Facebook Live. I'm so excited. I just wanted to share. I had a dream. I wanted to share my experience. I know homeschooling is not easy and I feel like our family finished strong. We didn't have, um, like it wasn't beautiful all the time and I'm the first person to admit that, but I wanted a forum where I could uh, share and support and encourage other homeschoolers. So that's what this is. So welcome. Uh, if you are new to Spark Homeschool Parent, or if you just haven't had a chance to watch a lot of the Facebook Lives that I've done, it's sometimes a little bit hard to find those in that Spark Homeschool Parent um, Facebook group. So this was all new to me. So those are stored at Spark Educational Therapy Facebook page, and you can find it under the videos. So all 26 of those will be there. Um, and also, if you are finding value in these um, Facebook Lives and these videos and being part of the community of Spark Homeschool Parent, could you please share it with another family? We often don't share our struggles openly with each other. Be well, for whatever reason. I. Uh, talk about that at, uh, on other Facebook Lives, but no doubt you know somebody else who would benefit from listening to these and just being part of a community uh, of other like-minded families that are educating their children at home. So I encourage you to share this resource to them. Again, I'm Diana Rolston. Today's conversation is creating a home where everybody wants to learn, grow, and dream. For those of you that don't know me, I have three boys. I 
homeschooled them. Uh, they educated at home until graduation, which was 2018. I have a 23 year old and my twins are 21. So 2018 was when they uh, graduated. I will be the first to admit that I did not do everything right. We had lots of bad days. We had periods of bad times, dark times. But like I said, I really think uh, that we finished strong. And now with my boys being out in the work world, I can see the huge benefits and the blessings that came to our family through homeschooling. And that's what I want to share uh, with others. Yeah, I made lots of mistakes. And there were many times when I wanted to quit. You can probably ask my kids and they will say the same. Many times when they thought they wanted to go back to school also. And uh, But that's now I have the opportunity to share because I know some of you are feeling the same. I have the opportunity to share things that I learned. But if people have, if any of you have questions, I have a wide uh, resource of people that I know who have also graduated their children through homeschooling. Some of them homeschooling many, many more years than I did. Um, but also there are people who focus on different areas of education and I'm happy to bring those people in uh, for interviews also. So if you have any questions about homeschooling, any concerns, any fears, I would love to hear those. And uh, that's definitely a topic that we could talk about in Facebook Lives or on the, the Facebook group at any time. One thing that I love talking about and love sharing is talking about dreams, talking about those beautiful, unique um, dreams that are deep inside us, that are truly our own, and talking about that with our children, the dreams that are truly their own. When I'm saying dreams, I'm not talking about when we're asleep and our mind wanders and they may mean something to us or they may just be random things that are going through our head. I'm not talking about those dreams. Those are interesting too, but I'm talking about dreams, like the ambitions, the aspirations, the uh, ideas that come from deep, deep within you. As a Christian, I really believe that God has planted unique dreams inside the hearts of each one of us. And that's what I'm uh, talking about. And that's where our homeschool journey really should begin, where we can allow our children to express, explore, discover their dream. Each one of us, each one of our children have very unique dreams. They may sound crazy to us. And as a parent um, of a child who's dreaming some what we think crazy, unrealistic, unsustainable, can't support you for life kind of dream, I'm really encouraging you not to judge, just to listen, encourage, um, engage in these conversations because that's where it starts. Our children are going to discover through life and through their experiences that some of these dreams, yeah, will be hard to attain. But let's just get them thinking. Let's help them discover who they are in those dreams that are deep within them without judgment and just see how excited they can be. Some of our kids are going to have a hard time. This is maybe something that they haven't thought about before. Um, so let's not put ideas into their heads uh, because we don't know what's in there. But um, let's try to draw that out. And it, this should be a continuing conversation. I continue to have these conversations with my children now, my husband too. and. Um, it's just really exciting. 
there's a young woman in my life who I adore and we have lots of conversations. There was a few years ago, she was in her early 20s at the time. She came to me with a decision that had to be made. She felt like it was a decision that was going to lead her in one path or the other towards her future. It was a huge decision in her life. So she came to me probably looking for advice and uh, my recommendations, maybe looking for someone to tell her what direction, what uh, decision to make. But I just said, let's just put that in the back burner right now. Let's just start by you sharing what what's your dream? She is a free spirited, beautiful girl. And she shared with me, probably for the first time, sharing it with an adult, because to some adults it's going to seem crazy. She wants to buy a van and travel through America. She wants to spend her summers in the mountains and her winters in the sun on the ocean. I know that sounds beautiful to us and a far out dream. But this is a young woman who, this is truly where she comes alive. I have a son, well, as I said, I have three sons. One of my sons has this dream of becoming a world-class paddler, a uh, whitewater canoe, canoeist. That is a dream that um, I encourage and we continue to talk about. Um, it may seem unrealistic to me, and very scary to me actually but this is something that is uniquely um, him and comes from a deep passion within him so i just want to say that by allowing our children to visit revisit their dreams over and over again so it's not a one-time conversation but uh, as they grow and um, grow into their dreams we want to have these conversations over and over again. Our children will start making decisions that will eventually lead them to their goal. Let me repeat that. Our children will make the decisions that will lead them towards their goal. I also saw a quote that says, follow your dreams, they know the way. So something to keep in mind. A spark homeschool parent. So I want you to think of the word spark. spark that's the, the spark, the, when you engage with somebody and you're talking about their, their dreams, you just see that spark within them. And I think that's probably how I look when I talk about dreams and engage in these conversations because uh, I love it, just sparking people into um, the best that they can be and the unique people that they are. So Spark Homeschool Parent, uh, I believe there are five pillars to effective educate effectively educating our children at home the first is the s the strengths i talk a lot about discovering our children's strengths a lot of homeschool communities talk about discovering our children's strengths and i believe that engaging with them and helping them discover their dreams those unique dreams um, is part of that Discovering our children's strengths, their weakness, who they really are. That's the S. The P is purpose. And that's what we're talking about this month. And that's what I'm talking about today. Purpose, the goals, the direction. Um, but those start with strengths and then create unique purpose for our children's year ahead and uh, homeschooling journey. And then we have to talk about attitude. The attitude that we cultivate in our house, that learning is fun, that uh, we all people want to learn and strive and grow, but also there's a lot of bad attitudes that we need to talk about. Um, you'll see in the archives there in the videos that I talked to one woman about anger and uh, just the importance and um, yeah, there's a, a lot of people that will discourage us along our homeschool journey. So that's um, taking check of our attitude is important. And then 
for anything to be successful, we need to reflect. We need to see the goals that we set out, where we have come from, what worked, what didn't, uh, where we are now, and readjust as we move on into the future. And then the K is keep the keep on going. Uh, when we have embraced this lifestyle of homeschooling, we want to keep on going. That's the K. So again, we're talking about purpose. So what is purpose? Purpose is the direction, the plan, the objective of what we're doing, the target, where we're what we're reaching towards. And so I talk about purpose as the goals that your children need to set, as the goals that together we set with our children in order for them to reach their dreams, their goals, their aspirations. That young lady that I was mentioning, she is really creative. And when she had this decision to make, with keeping in mind that she uh, wants to live in her van and travel through America um, throughout the year, seeking out the sun, she had the decision of where what job she was going to be doing. And the opportunity that, uh, that arose was a mentorship program in California, mentoring her in the area of social media and company marketing. And for her, that was a no-brainer because that opportunity will allow her to more easily reach her goal. She can see herself working from her van, from a coffee shop in the beach of Santa Barbara or the mountains in Alberta. Um, and that is what she is working towards. And so this social media opportunity and company marketing opportunity is perfectly suited for her. And uh, she's just loving it. And then I have, uh, there's another young man that I know also in his early 20s, who has always, I've known him since he was a child, always dreamed about being a pilot. Always dreamed about flying. Now, he also graduated in the last few years from college and has his pilot license, but since graduating, there haven't been a lot of opportunities in that area, as everybody knows. But he does have a job. He went after a job at the airport, the International Airport here, and he's de-icing airplanes. We're in the north, so yes, that's a thing. Um, taking the ice off the wings and the whatever of the airplane. But that is so suited for him. And it's like it, when you know the dreams that this boy has within his heart, uh, it's not even a question of whether he would take that position or not. For me, it's not an environment that I want to be in, but it's unique for him. Uh, one of my boys, he his strengths, like truly is maintaining and uh, repairing small engines. I've talked to, about him a few times. But he has a dream of renting a heated barn setting up shop there and doing that full time, repairing, maintaining small engines. So he looked into doing that, into actually reaching his goal as a 21 year old. He was 20 or 19 at the time. But looking at rent, rent is very high right now. And uh, realized that, that that's not attainable right now. But he still has it as a dream, and it's something that he's working towards. Some of you may think, yeah, that's really great for you. But my kids just aren't motivated, and all they want to do is play video games. I've recently been reading a lot of uh, writings by Peg Dawson. You might want to take a look at some of the work that she does. She talks about executive function skills. And for this topic, she says, when you think about what teens really want, it's not the latest video games or phone. If you ask us, though, we probably would say that that is what they want. But she's the expert. And she says, they are impatient to grow up. 
and have all the freedom that adults have. They are motivated by, be, uh, by being able to make their own choices and decisions by having their opinions valued. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying don't judge, just listen, engage in the conversation, ask questions, clarify. Our children are uh, just wanting to, they're motivated by having their opinions valued. She goes on to say, the key to motivating your son and daughter is to, when you responsibly can, give them these powers, these powers of making their own decisions. You will see that when our children are able to make their own decisions, decisions about goals that they want to achieve in the school year ahead of them, they're going to look back and say, why would I waste my time playing video games? I said it before, I'm going to repeat it again. By allowing our children to revisit their dreams over and over again, our children will start making decisions that will eventually lead them to their goal. And that's, uh, that's where we start when we think about setting goals for the school year ahead. I don't like using the word homeschooling because I, but it's a word that everybody, when I say homeschooling, everyone can relate to it. They have an idea of what homeschooling is. But we, I do not encourage anyone to school at home. And that's what the word homeschooling means, doing school at home. Rather, as homeschoolers, as those that educate our children at home, we are educating our children. It happens to be at home, but it's also in the community and in the real world. So let's talk about those goals that we're setting for our children. It's sort of this time of the year that we're ending this school year, starting to think about the great opportunities and possibilities for next year. We are engaging our children in those conversations about dreams and what they want to do. And we're allowing them to make the decisions. They want to make their own choices. Um, so we're setting goals for our children, academic goals. When our children really believe they can reach their goals, there are going to be some things that they need to learn, like in the school environment. And they're going to realize that. Uh, for this young woman who wants to learn social media, she's going to have to learn uh, quite a few things. And there's lots of courses that she can take and uh, this mentoring program that she's doing. For this young man who wanted to be a pilot, he needs to, there are a lot of prerequisites pre to getting into a pilot program uh, or whatever program at college. So he knows that he needs to um, set those goals and those will be his academic goals for the year. Well, for the next few years. So uh, that's where we start with that. We will, excuse me, set spiritual goals together with our children. Uh, that just creates a well-rounded person and an important aspect of everybody's life. We're going to set uh, physical goals for my son who wants to be a world-class paddler, there's a, a lot of physical demands. He's going to have to set, or he did, because he's a young man now, set physical goals that he needed to meet every year and then um, continues to set those goals. And also to create well-rounded children, we want to sit down with our children and create social goals. And those are ones that will be easy for our children and exciting for our children to uh, set out on their own. You've heard about teacher-driven education, student-driven education. I want you just to start thinking about this dream-driven education. Some of you might remember a conversation I had a few weeks ago with Jason Lindsay. Again, if you didn't hear that conversation, it's called 
amazing things youth can do developing your children's soft skills. So we are talking about developing their public speaking and their confidence and um, business sense and things like that, uh, their soft skills. And um, again, you can see that in the Spark Educational Therapy in the videos section there. Um, it was a great conversation and I was thinking back on that conversation I asked Jason, what advice would you have for parents that would like to help their children get out of their comfort zone? We were talking about children doing hard things, getting out of their comfort zone. So I was expecting him to say, you know, as parents, we want to encourage and maybe push our children a little bit, but that's not what he said. And it has stuck with me. And I hope it's something that you have thought about since then also. He said, you have to do hard things. You have, as a parent, you have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to model this for your children. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to encourage you for this also. What are your dreams? What are your dreams as a parent? Do you have a lot of dreams and sometimes over the years, we've learned to suppress those dreams. It's never too late to delve into who you are, what your strengths are as a parent, what your weaknesses are. How can we help our children discover who they are and explore their dreams if we haven't done it? For ourselves. So I want to encourage you, spend some time, start dreaming. Some of our dreams, they start crazy. And when I love brainstorming, and I will always start by saying, okay, this is just the beginning of my brainstorm. These don't make sense, but this is where we're going to start. And then that's maybe how your dreams are going to be. Don't hold them back. Just dream. As you engage with, in these conversations with your children, I would love to hear from you. What are your children dreaming about? What are their goals? What are the crazy, unique, beautiful dreams that they're having, that they have, that uh, you can use this home education environment to reach? But also, I'd love to hear, as you allow yourself to dream, I want to hear what your dreams are. As I said, one of my dreams was to share with others the uh, experiences and all the beautiful things that I learned while I was homeschooling my children. And I was able to do that in a very small environment. But doing Facebook Lives, and creating this group really is, it is becoming a dream come true for me. And as I reflect, I dream bigger and I dream bigger and I dream bigger. And it's really encouraging for me to see how many people are benefiting and watching these Facebook lives. And that brings us back to creating a home where everyone wants to learn, grow, and dream. When we started, we were talking about in a, a learning environment where our children <clears throat> can dream. But I want you to just know that in order for our children to dream, we need a home where everybody dreams. And that includes you, for, for sure. And I'd love to hear from you. As always, I hope this has been of benefit to you. At Spark Homeschool Parent, it really is my goal to create uh, an encouraging environment where we can just openly talk about the fears, the joys, also the questions that we have about homeschooling and not to judge each other. None of us are doing it perfectly. We all have times of disappointment. So uh, I welcome your questions. And these home, uh, these Facebook lives are just part of the conversation that we have. 
If you'd like to be part of the ongoing conversation, please head over to Facebook and this is a, you can redo that in the Spark Homeschool Parent Facebook group. And I will be here again tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, next Friday, every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember that as homeschoolers, we can help our children find the spark, discover the dreams that ignite their learning. Thanks for joining.